Three, two, one. We are live now. So, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, across uh, the board, wherever you are watching us live. Uh, this is Asami India, and uh, we are continuing with the academics uh, series of Ask the Masters, wherein we have case-based discussions uh, based on Elizarov methodology. Uh, last five months, we have been uh, doing this, and we have all. Already, we are already through with the states of uh, uh, Bihar, uh, uh, Karnataka, Delhi, uh, so and Madhya Pradesh. So this time it is the turn for uh, uh, Tamil Nadu state. The state representative of Tamil Nadu is Dr. Vigneshwaran, and along with uh, him, we have a stellar group of people and the speakers who are going to present. Uh, Dr. Sridhar, he is consultant orthopedic trauma and Elizabeth surgeon. At the CM Specialty Hospital and Jaya Elizabeth Center in Namakkal. Then we have Dr. Suresh Gadhi, sir, is a professor at Jitmar Pondicherry. Then we have Dr. Vignesh himself, who is a consultant pediatric and pediatric ortho and Elizabeth surgeon at the Medway Hospitals in Chennai. And the last but not the least, we have Dr. Subramanya Gandhi, who is an assistant professor at Sri Balaji Medical College and Hospital Chennai. So, on behalf of the President uh, Asami India, Dr. Ruta Kulkarni, it's my proud privilege to welcome uh, all the viewers and all the speakers over here. Uh, Dr. Vignesh has done a good job of uh, uh, getting all the speakers together and stitching a topic. The topic today goes by interesting, my interesting cases, interesting case uh, series. So, may I start, um, may I request Dr. Sridhar to kindly start the proceedings. Uh, sir, Dr. Sridhar, sir, can you please share the screen and go ahead? Yes, sir. I hope I am audible. Hello. Yes, you are audible, sir. Hey. Very well. Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks to the Asami India for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, this is a case presentation. A 17-year-old girl from Kangayam, Tamil Nadu. She met with a road traffic accident on December 2016 and she sustained open fracture dislocation left ankle for which external fixation and lattice mass torsi free flap was done at Coimbatore. Subsequently, it got infected and fixator removed and a BK cast was applied. On examination, there was a deformity in left ankle, free flap was there, sinuses and scars were present, tendinous over distal tibia abnormal mobility and range of movement is very painful. And this is the clinical uh, picture of the girl. You can see the deformed ankle, sinuses, scars, and the uh, lattice mus dorsi flap and all. This is the status she came with. And this is her X-ray. This shows uh, distal tibial <coughs> articular surface loss with uh, septic uh, features and some erosion of the Taylor dome with uh, non infected non-union status. How to proceed? So, uh, I went with uh, Elizara fixation, uh, three ring construct, two ring in the tibia and uh, one carbon ring in the Taylor region and uh, acute compression was done. Hibulectomy was done to facilitate the compression. And this is her uh, clinical pictures. Sorry, four ring construct with uh, distal carbon ring. And this is her post-op x-rays. The fixator period was nine months. And good union at the orthodosis site was achieved. And she had a very comfortable weight bearing. And this is her immediate post-op uh, fixate removal status. And this is her clinical picture after removal. And this is three years post-op follow-up. Had a nice solid union of tibiotalar orthodosis. With a comfortable weight bearing and she started going to her college. Some literature review. Uh, this is an European journal of an uh, reference. Simultaneous septic arthrodosis of the tibiotalar and subtalar joint with the external fixator. 
Since the introduction of compression arthrodesis by Chanli in 1951, several different surgical procedures have been described as a treatment options for various causes of ankle destruction. Internal procedures used were plates or screws, intramedullary fixation, arthroscopic fusion, etc. However, these procedures are mainly used in aseptic patients and the treatment of diffuse septic ankle destruction, especially in compromised hosts, remains a challenge. External stabilization in the form of Elizera offers a very good uh, tool for uh, solid arthrodesis. This is another uh, review. Orthoplastic surgery. Uh, the, the article is tibia Taylor arthrodesis is a treatment for septic distal tibia osteomyelitis using bone transport with monoplanar and uh, circular external pit setup. This article describes a complex case wherein an open tibial pylon fracture in 39 year old male resulted in septic pseudoarthrosis with articular involvement and skin necrosis. The infection was managed through a debridement with extended margins and obliteration of the defect with antibiotic impregnated spacer. Once the infection was treated, the bone was filled by bone transport procedure combined with tibia teller arthrosis. And another article, it shows uh, treatment of infected non-union of juxtarticular region of distal tibia by Ibrahim liver <coughs> It is a very complex and extremely difficult condition to manage diffuse osteoporosis of the small distal bone fragment, deformity, bone loss, soft tissue atrophy, and the adjacent joint contractures were the problems expected. External fixation and the distraction osteogenesis are the methods that have been documented to improve the outcome of non-union. This technique allows for the regeneration of large deficiency in the bone to fill the defect bone transport and shortening distractions may be used. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, sir. And uh, the case is self-explanatory. It's it's definitely a difficult one, a septic case, and has been managed very well, sir. So, uh, anyone among the among the speakers here, do uh, you have to you know clarify anything with uh, Dr. Sridhar, sir? It took nine months. You said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, sir, in such cases, when do you allow weight bearing, sir? Weight bearing usually we start in the third or fourth post of day, but this particular case I was yeah. typical. So the weight bearing was started after a month because the distal fragment oh. is very small and uh, All right. the calcaneum was not incorporated. So uh, then four, four wires were uh, passed through. Yeah, four uh, wires were passed through distal uh, fragment that is talus. So, for fear of loosening, I was a little bit skeptical about weight bearing and moreover, she is a girl, no? Like, the first experience is very painful and it is very difficult to uh, manage her. That's why I deferred weight bearing for a month in this particular case. And uh, did she end up with any shortening, sir? Probably, maybe in, uh, if you see, we have, maybe, uh, Less than an inch or so. so okay, so that was yeah. that was uh, yeah, compensated by some shooting. Yeah, acceptable. And the thing is, like uh, uh, being an orthrodesis, some little uh, shortening is beneficial for her to clear the ground. And moreover, uh, it's not that uh, the defect was not that long. That uh, the defect was not that big. So okay. I kept up going for acute compression with the small available. Uh, yes. Okay. Sir, one Very small nice doubt. Sir. Yeah, yeah. In four foot, was it away? Was it included within the ring, sir? Preoperative looks to have light uh, equinus deformity. Was four foot included in the ring, sir? Uh, she was having an uh, plantic red foot in the final post of picture, but uh, I do accept that some four foot uh, drop is there. It's because of the muscle loss and all. Like, uh, you cannot uh, have a uh, dynamic uh, uh, dorsiflexion in this particular patient. You can see the muscles were lost. Anterior compartment muscle is lost. Yes, but it is supple. You can see uh, it is totally plantigrade. And uh, in uh, most of the views, it is almost uh, the talar and uh, uh, alignment is uh, okay. Yes. One doubt. Any debridement on antibiotic uh, local space or anything were used, sir? Uh, uh, this particular case, 
I didn't even open at all. There was mini small opening, and uh, the Taylor uh, dome was uh, occupied, like with multiple uh, thing. And uh, uh, for uh, vascularity, I didn't. Uh, I don't know where the status of uh, uh, anterior and the posterior tibial. I don't know the status. And uh, moreover, uh, I just put small small nicks, and then through that K wires, I scarified the Taylor dome. And compression that will the final result, the side result. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, yeah. for uh, your uh, case. And uh, that, sorry, if, uh, is, is uh, that the only case, sir? I'm sure. Or yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See the. Yeah. Sir, tell me, sir. Tell me, sir. Yeah. Good presentation. Thank you, sir. Sir, good evening, sir. Okay, now, sir, Basu, sir, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. I have yes. few few important questions here. Yes. Number one, the patient was having a loss of distal tibia. Yes, sir. With a, do you have no other options other than talo tibia talo tibial fusion? Yes, sir. Why you did a distal third fibular osteotomy? Uh, in the and resected that much. Yeah, here uh, to compress the uh, non-union site. Yeah, the, in that case, why can't you do an osteotomy close to the non-union? Yeah, that is the bone transport and uh, transport. No, no. If you are doing a bone transport, yeah. there is no need for fibular osteotomy. Yeah, that's what. But no, if you are doing, mm -hmm. if you are doing an osteotomy. I would like to do the osteotomy very near the fracture site. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that the distal whole fragment become one unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't have to resect it at all. Yeah, yeah. Even and, uh, and and another problem is because in this case you have a flap there. Yeah. So yes, that shows there is a muscle loss. Yeah. I think the full foot has to be included in one unit. Okay. You must have included the calcaneum and the forefoot in the frame. Okay, sir. And what is the posterior position because your subtalar and talus is going to get fused. You must aim for 10 degree dorsiflexion. Oh. Your postoperative x ray, yeah, show the postoperative x ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. When you draw the axis of the long axis of the tibia and long axis of the calcaneum. So that must be 120 degrees posterior. Okay. Yes, sir. You can do the fraction. So that was not, it was not happened there. And four foot is dropped. And again, whenever you fuse the subtalar joint and the talotibial joint, always try to fuse the distal tibia to the neck of the talus. So this patient is going to have a short, I mean, a fused angle. A long leg, when the tibia is fused to the body of the talus, they will have a long segment in front. Clearing the ground is a little difficult. So if you keep it to the neck of the talus, there's more space posteriorly because the talus is shifted posterior. So clearing the ground is easier. So, and the mechanical act usually comes there at that point. So always aim for Tibia to the cal talar, I mean calcaneal neck. So if you do that way, all your problems are now the foot drop, calcaneal, everything. Now the four foot drop, everything will be solved. Like this particular case, where there is a loss of uh, anterior tibial muscle. And, no, uh, that's yeah. one. Because the, when you fuse the angle joint, the, you don't need muscles. Yeah. You can even take the uh, tendo Achilles out. There is no function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because angle joint is not working, no? Yes sir, yes, sir. So you don't have to worry about anything. So possibly now you can just do an osteotomy at the fracture site and clear the neck of talus anteriorly, not at the body. And the whole thing one unit. You can shift slowly backwards if you do the fibular osteotomy, same level. If the fibular osteotomy higher level, you cannot shift it backwards. What's the point? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If both are at the same level, you can slowly shift the whole foot backwards so that the distal tibia is uniting with the neck. Yes, sir. Agree? Yes, sir. With this, you can only do this. Yes, sir. Okay, anyway, it's a nice case. Done well. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, one doubt, sir. Yeah. Sir, if you told to include calcaneal wire, sir. Will you include a separate ring for the calcaneal or with the talus mm -hmm. ring itself, you put uh, wires in the calcaneal, sir, like drop no, wires? Yeah, here, it doesn't make any difference. The whole foot is one unit. Mm -hmm. You just make a foot frame. But normally in foot frame, in my setup, my normal cases, I do only the calcaneum and the forefoot. Here, you must have the talar wire. You must have two to three talar wire in addition to get because you are few, you going to compress talus to the tibia. Yes, so that sir. usually you can use the uh, three hole or four hole male post and olive yes, wires from both sides, little oblique, you know, like post and anterior length. Olive two olive wires will stabilize it. And now, if your four foot is in one unit, you can actually literally play with that that part. You can use an SUV or you can use any hinges and translate it backwards. Or you can do a, a tibial bone transport and whatever thing. Or if you want to do a I mean, posterior translation, you have to cut the fibula exactly the same level as the, the, the upper end of the talus. Then only you can shift it backwards. So when you're that, my point is while walking, the forefoot should be shot in a fused angle. That is the before the anterior to the fusion side should be as short as possible. So clearing the ground is easy for the patient. Okay. Yes, sir. So Fine. always aim for that. Maybe technically difficult, but theoretically we must be aiming for that. But anyway, the case is done well. This is there is no doubt about it. Yes, sir. One yes, small in doubt, sir. Yeah, in this particular case, sir, the Tyler uh, neck is very. Uh, deformed, sir. So the there's, there's, no, no. You have to just translate. Yeah, translate. Yeah. Translate it. Yes, sir. Sir, one small doubt. Take more out. No. Yes, sir. Yeah, Vignesh, please go ahead. Sir, if we do osteotomy of the fibula at the that fracture non-union site, uh, does it affect the ankle uh, valgus yes, or varus? Angle is fusing, no. Yes, sir. You are going to fuse the angle. Yes, sir. The lateral malleolus and medial malleolus is needed only when your ankle joint is mobile. Mm -hmm. When the ankle joint is used, you don't need malleolus. It will only because here in this case, you were not able to translate it backwards yes. because osteotomy was higher. With the higher osteotomy, you cannot translate it backwards. And the position of immobile, the, at the end, no, the, the, the ideal position is 10 degree dose of it. Because our, we, our, we need good walking and maybe a little bit of sitting. You need 10 degree dose of at the at the fusion side. So aim for that. The posterior angle should be around 120 to 130 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for pitching in and educating us all. So, uh, if we can uh, move ahead, uh, I think I'll invite uh, Dr. Suresh Gandhi. Sir, uh, if you can. Sir, sir good anyway, evening, sir. Anyway, it was an excellent case. Uh, congratulations, special congratulations to uh, uh, Sridhar. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes. Dr. Suresh Gandhi, can you uh, come in and share your screen, please? So can you see my screen? Not yet. Hello. Not yet. We cannot see. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes, sir. Now. Not yet. Can anyone else see? Oh, no. No, sir. Okay. 
so uh, gandhi sir by the time you right, set right, up uh, right, let's right, right. move to the next speaker and uh, i'm sure it will be fixed so okay, uh, right, dr right, vignesh right. uh, may i request you to right. kindly go ahead with your presentation yes yeah dr vignesh go ahead okay so let's start screen sharing yes yes please go ahead Does my screen is visible? Yes. Yes, sir. Good evening, one and all. I am presenting a, a case of distal tibia giant cell tumor, which was treated with the Ulysar or ring fixator. So here is a thirty-seven-year-old male patient presented with a complaint of pain and swelling over the. Around the right ankle since six months, the pain was insidious onset, dull aching type, and it was non-radiating and aggravated on exertion and relieved by rest. The swelling also was insidious in onset, which was gradually progressive in nature. There was no history of previous trauma or fever or loss of appetite and weight loss. On examination, there was a diffuse swelling present over the distal end of the tibia, which was ill-defined margin, and the skin over the swelling was pinchable, and it was bony hard in consistency. There is no local rise of temperature, uh, mild tenderness present diffusely over the swelling. The range of movement of ankle were terminally restricted and painful, and no distal neurovascular deficit. Hence, we plan for a radiograph, which shows. There is an eccentric expansor lytic lesion present over the distal end of the tibia, extending over the up to the medial malleoli and posteriorly. To know the extent of the lesion, whether the lesion extends to soft tissue, we have done an MRI. MRI scans also show the lesion extending up to the medial malleoli and posteriorly, but there is no soft tissue extension. and some amount of extension up to the subchondral region of the bone in the distal tibia so we did a open biopsy and biopsy came to be confirmatory of the giant cell tumor of the distal and the tibia now considering his age and he was a manual labor by occupation and to get a single stage procedure we planned for resection ankle arthrodesis and to fill the bone defect segmental bone transport with the help of elisero ring fixator was planned here is the sequence of the procedure what we had performed so the distal lytic lesion along with the wide margin of normal margin resection was done and followed by resection the articular surface on the medial aspect of the fibula and the lateral and superior aspect of the talus were denuded and fibular talar screws partial threaded screws were inserted from lateral to medial direction to stabilize the ankle joint and to maintain the length of the limb and then the ankle spanning elisero fixator was applied to three rings in the tibia and one foot frame was connected then proximal drill type of carticotomy was performed to achieve bone transport so following elisero fixator from the seventh following the fixator then from the seventh day the distraction was started between the first and the second ring and compression between the third and the fourth ring the bone transport was done to achieve the tibio talar fusion and the regenerate was allowed to consolidate once uh, consolidated the fixator was removed so post operative protocol from the second post operative day the patient was allowed to do uh, full 
straight leg rising on the side of the court and on the bed and full range of knee movement were started to maintain the knee range of movement and allow to walk non weight bearing walker walking with the help of the walker support and from the seventh post operative day the distraction was started at the rate of 1 foot 4 times a day between the first and the second ring and compression was done between the third and the foot frame from the seventh post operative day here are the serial radiograph uh, this was the immediate post operative radiograph 7 cm of the distal end of the tibia that is a lytic lesion along with a normal margin was resected and proximal drill type carticotomy was done on three rings in the tibia and foot frame was connected and this was at 6 weeks post op the transport was going on and at 3 months the docking was achieved the tibio teller docking was achieved and then at the 6 month the regenerate started consolidating and at 9 month the further consolidation of the regenerate and nice union of the tibio teller surface so at 12 months the tibio teller fusion site was strong and testing was done there was no abnormal motion then the foot frame was removed but the tibial frame was retained dynamization was done to allow further consolidation of the regenerate and one month later the entire fixator was removed and patient was allowed to do full weight bearing walking the there was a solid union achieved between the tibial and teller surface and, and the regenerate also consolidated well so here are the clinical photograph the length of the limb is maintained and patient is able to stand full weight bearing single leg stands over the affected limb and able to sit cross leg and able to achieve full range of knee movement also patient able to walk full weight bearing over the affected limb so now coming to giant cell tumor which accounts for around 20% of all benign tumors uh, but around the foot and ankle region only it is rare and it present only 4% of the lesion so out of this 4% 90% occurs in the metaphyseal epiphyseal region and some of the lesion extends into the subchondral bone or even to the articular cartilage so any lesion in this distal end of tibia sir had mentioned earlier it is a challenging so due to the scars soft tissue coverage and difficulty in achieving a wide marginal excision and also the vascularity as minimum to achieve a solid union is a challenging in this case so there are various treatment option for treating the distal end of the tibia giant cell tumor so the gold standard is curettage and filling the bony defect and endoprosthetic replacement and another option is resection and ankle arthrosis which can be done with either a non vascularized graft or vascularized bone graft or with a elisero fixator and segmental bone transport even curettage with elisero stabilization also can be performed but in this case as a single stage and considering its occupation and in age we plan for resection ankle arthrosis and segmental transport with the elisero fixator on reviewing the literature we had found yenghal et al who had done for weaving sarcoma of the prox- proximal to the weaving sarcoma in the proximal to the ankle joint he had performed a similar resection arthrosis of the ankle joint and segmental bone transport was done to achieve a large bone gap to fill the defect and roberto et al also performed the same arthrosis of the ankle joint for various benign tumors and selected case of malignant tumors in the distal end of the tibia he had used various bone graft to achieve arthrodesis another study by taylor et al he had presented a case report of multicentric giant cell tumor in which initially he had performed the curettage and filling the bony defect uh, for a distal and tibia lesion so after six months he had noted a recurrence of the lesion for which he had performed resection of the lesion and then elisero bone lengthening to achieve the ankle arthrodesis so in his study so by performing resection ankle arthrosis what are the advantages so what are the benefits if we see it restores the skeletal continuity and it provides an excellent stability and it avoids a problem related to any prosthetic implantation which occurs in case of endoprosthetic replacement on fixing the 
fib distal end of the fibula to the remaining talus that also prevents the ankle from going to any valgus deformity. So in case of vas vascularized bone graft, there will be a donor site morbidity. So in this case, since bone transport was used to fill the large bony defect, so there is no donor site morbidity and no muscle weakness. And only the tibiotalar joint is used, and thus we are preserving the subtalar joint. To conclude, ankle resection arthrosis with the segmental bone transport with the help of a fixator is a viable option for reconstruction of the distal and tibia joint cell tumor. Thank you. So, uh, thanks, Dr. Vignesh. Uh, it was an excellent presentation. Uh, before I would, uh, before I invite uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Vasudevan sir for his expert comments, and I'm sure sir always has a few tips to teach. Though this case has been done well, I can only compare it with uh, uh, two cases which I have also done in the recent past. The first one which I did, uh, I think I presented in one of the webinars. And And uh, Dr. Vasu was there. Things had become, uh, the construct was unstable. And so, uh, all kudos to you. It's junction of the distal um, epiphysic region. So, <coughs> it was a big defect, about 13, 14 centimeters, which had to be transported. And uh, the gap had to be filled up. And uh, on the way, the rings, the patient also was lost to follow up. Anyways, uh, Vasu, sir, may I please request you to uh, kindly come up with uh, uh, something, sir. No, let the let the others speak first, uh, sir. Uh, I think he, he he this is the only case, sir, by Doctor Vignesh, and we are discussing case after case, sir. So yeah, that's right. Let the other oh. people are there. No, let the comments. Their comments. All come right, all right, all right, sir. All right, sir. All right, sir. And, uh, all right, sir. Um, Shridhar yes, is sir. there. Yes, Doctor Shridhar. Both Gandhis. Yes, sir. Dr. Sridhar, can you uh, unmute yourself and uh, you have any queries, any comments? Can you go ahead? Yeah, the thing is like uh, I always uh, don't mix internal fixation with external fixation. That's my idea. I never uh, combine screws with uh, uh, rings and all. Uh, if at all, I will go for uh, all you like thing. That is my only technical uh, tips. I always... Uh, don't mix internal fixation with uh, external fixation. That is my only comment. That's all. Hello. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah because whenever you put a screw, it's an interfragmentary fixation. Yes, sir. So interfragmentary fixation must be always neutralized. And again, I'll, at the, that point, I'll come again later. But anyway, we wait for Subramanya Gandhi's. Any, anything? Yeah, any, you have something to ask? No, sir. No. That... Suresh Gandhi? Okay. Vignesh? Yes, sir. First thing, it's a good case. Done Thank well. you, sir. Yes, sir. There are many options of managing. Just like the whether you are managing... Uh, an infected non-union or the case like uh, Sridhar, yes, in Elizaro, there is no difference. Yes, sir. It's, it's all regarding management of a gap. Gap. Okay. Yes, so, sir. we are not bothered whether it is a, we are treating a tumor or whether you are treating a bone loss. Whatever may be, you do this, resect it and convert it into a gap. Gap. And you think about filling the gap. Yes, sir. And here you have one point. Fixation of the distal fibula to the remaining talus prevents angle valgus deformity. Where is the angle now? Sir, now it is fused. Then, then where do you want to... That, that statement is not correct. Because you are, there is no angle. And where do you want a stability of the angle valgus stability when the angle is not there? Agreed? Yes, sir. So that's true. Everything was wrong. You don't need. Okay. Sir. Number two, 
you that one will prevent putting a caver in the talus talus yes, it takes lot of space because the screw will be at least 4 mm size yes sir so that means it takes about 8 mm space there and do not in one plane in all multi planes okay yes sir and here you have not put any tar or wires so when you compress the talus to the tibia there is a chance that the subtalar joint may escape a fusion when you put the calcaneal wire and try to compress the transported fragment with the uh, foot frame yes, the subtalar joint is completely crushed crushed agree okay sir so by putting wire in the talus and appropriately stabilizing at least the primary force will go to the talus to the tibia and some part of the subtalar joint can be free Um, um, it may not be but still that helps you okay sir okay and when and it's like now when you do a bone transport again when the fibula is uh, even in a treatment of non unions you always would like to keep the fibula free loose osteotomize and keep it a gap so you can play with the fragment okay sir and here you have said you have done a bone transport in a bone transport means one single adjustment the bone moves inside but your description and your frame looks like you are simultaneous compression lengthening so you must always differentiate between a bone transport and a simultaneous compression distraction practically everything happened the same way yes sir transport means with the same full length straight same single rod yes sir and the upper ring and lower ring there is no changing only the middle fragment is moving downwards so that is transport Okay. when you do lengthening from the top you are shortening from below this is a simultaneous compartment shortening lengthening agree yes sir and even after all these things see the mechanical acts of the knee joint the tibia is still in virus see the distal femur yes, line because tibia you are not able to see you uh, can see the distal femur line Yes, sir. And draw the metaphyseal line of the tibia. It's in virus. Yes, sir. You always aim for, uh, like, to the Fujisawa point, no, the mechanical axis. Yes, sir. And again, see that because the fibula is fused to the talus, now you cannot shift the anterior posterior. Yes, sir. And and again, you can see that patient in the in the video. He was just jumping. He is. I mean, take the toe off when I mean, the heel off is not happening. Yes, sir. So there is a jumping there because the clearing of the forefoot is difficult, and that is why you keep the forefoot that the the fore the anterior part of the foot short. Okay, sir. And let the posterior part little long. Long. So you can walk easily. So these are all the points which generally not discussed in the Elizabeth meetings. Yes, because everybody will say, "Yeah, yeah, very good and nice and go and that way." So it is not that way. So we must analyze our cases, and next case we can do much better. Yes, sir. Agreed. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm not saying if the procedure is bad. Done, everything is good, much better. No other treatment can possible here. Then the all everything has been done, but what yes, what are the ways to improve our outcome? Okay, sir. yes, sir. So you all can you can improve. I am also improving on that. Yes, sir. Okay, so these are some points which I have to make, and put a talar wire, and avoid screws as mentioned by uh, 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 Shridhar. Okay, sir. It is always better to put a olive wire, and I would like to do an osteotomy above that. And generally, I don't put it. I put a olive wire. Okay, sir. But the distal tibia, I mean, distal fibula, I put it on the talus. Yes, sir. So make life much more simpler, and always go for the osteotomy line. Now there, you make little valgus. Okay. Sir. Anyway, overall, it's a nice case and yes, real challenging one. Yes. Sir. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. And sir, uh, one small uh, doubt uh, near the corticotomy site. What is the valgus? Sir, like we have to correct that. No, no. Uh, you you have to check the proximal tibia joint line and mechanical okay. axis. See yes, the sir. medial MPT is ninety degrees or more. Yes, sir. Not even eighty to eighty-seven degrees. So anyway, okay. let him enjoy a. A free high table osteotomy. Okay, sir. Whenever you do a high the upper table corticotomy, yes, I, most of the patients I give them a free high table osteotomy. Okay, sir. 
always shift to 90 92 degrees so that is my aim yes sir. i don't do like just simply lengthening because yes. i don't use anything no yes sir i, I can always make it to 92 degrees tbl 2 degree valgus is always good okay sir yeah that that takes the food off from a joint replacement side <laughs> yes sir thank you sir thank you sir absolutely critical and this is the only way to improve so uh, dr vignesh i might yeah, stop just sir to, yeah just wanted to ask you one thing uh, was there any brace also given after yeah the soon after the fixator right. fixator removal i had given a clamshell orthosis just for the oh. safety since he is right. a manual laborer and he need to uh, go for his routine work then later allowed him to full weight bear without that Okay. Thank you. So uh, we move on to Dr. Suresh Gandhi now, uh, sir. I hope your presentation is ready. And uh, are you able to share it now? Yes. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Suresh, sir, your voice is not heard, sir. Can you hear me now? Sir, please increase your volume, sir. Device volume, sir, as much as you can. No, it's very feeble. Hello. They're not able to hear you, sir. Pangol. Yeah. Pangol. 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 Sir, now it's better. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, sir, you try to go ahead, sir. Let us see if we can decipher anything. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Gandhi, I can't hear anything. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Can you? Hello. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. We can start. Sir, your voice is not audible. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. 
Sir, still not audible, sir. Hello, can you? Hello. Hello. Sir, your voice is really not audible. I think there is some problem with your device, sir. I think. Sir, now, now, can you hear me? Yes, Please we, set your, uh, we can your hear you, settings, better, but still it is not as clear as we want it. But uh, if this is the, oh, the you can go ahead, sir. Let's see. It's not clear, huh? Now it's better. Now it is now, better. Now it's it okay, is sir. Now it's okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Please go ahead now, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, deformity and difficulty of walking. These are the complaints she uh, was brought by her parents. And if you, if you see closely the uh, deformity assessment, you can see the foot uh, on the lateral side. From the medial side, you can see that uh, what are the deformities. Maybe uh, let me explain in the next slides. But uh, these are the other views of the foot from the plantar side from the dorsal side. So, child was walking in the lateral column of the foot. You can see the small callosity in the lateral side of the foot. And also, you can see the fourth foot is supinated almost uh, 80 degrees. The uh, fourth foot supinated. And uh, Radiological assessment, and if you take an X-ray, it's very difficult to see that's the plateau anatomy. Uh, dialysis is very difficult to identify through the X-ray. It's maybe used with uh, calcaneal, subtalar fusion. And the ankle also she has a minimum uh, jog of uh, 5 to 10 degree of dorsal pressure. From, uh, plantar pressure. And also, you can see there is a mid dorsal bone, it's almost nothing you can see. Pupil looks like used with uh, calcaneum, and the medial cuneiform, all the cuneiforms and ampullas appears to be on loss. And also, she doesn't have a first method of the data is hanging. You can see the X-ray. So uh, now, if you, if you see all the pictures, all of the clinical pictures on the X-ray, you can instead of the problem. What are the list of the things? Now she has a limited ankle, not from the ankle to foot, directly. So limited ankle function, and the ankle moment is very limited. And subtalar fusion looks like a calcaneo tibial fusion, chala fusion. And the calcaneal fever also fused, and the fever looks like very small and absent with foot. With foot means like there's navicular and all kilograms are absent and first commanded us. You can see that grade two is uh, free. And the ankle and hind foot of, of alignment is normal. You see it from the plantar side. Hind foot alignment looks like almost near normal. And the mid foot, there is an abduction and dorsiflexion. You can see that the, uh, uh, sorry, mid foot, there is an abduction and dorsiflexion. And as four foot, I already told you there is a circulation of 80 degree. And also another problem is the dorsal skin scar. You can see that uh, scar here, when the adherent scar here, but also like all the tendons, like even clinically, there's no uh, movements in the foot, uh, but the sensation, all the things are intact. And uh, there is a short mid and fourth foot. This, these are the company. And also posterior neurovascular arthritis. Because only single vessel is there, dorsally all, all the neurovascular is gone. Probably she has only posterior neurovascular arthritis. With this distal problem, so, any foot problem, we know that basic foot problem is you have to give a plantic aid, painless mobile foot, that is a aid. But here, maybe I can give a plantic aid, but painless, maybe I know like because other bones are not done, so we, I may try that also painless, but mobile foot is difficult because there's no normal anatomical uh, like bones are not available in the medial side. So, with the limited objects, what I plan, this is the medial column lengthening because medial shortening is there. The correction of the midfoot dots in these are the problems I listed. So, one by one, maybe I'm making as a correction. Uh, and also, four foot stipulation, loss of contract of the skin, maybe I have to release. And uh, then I suggested the bed that medial reconstruction we do with the uh, middle graph because first contrast is important. But sometimes, if you do with it, then maybe you end up with the painful. So, I was having other options, which maybe you can do with the The patient who was like, so that the patient who is not wearing uh, this temple. At the time, I plan to do all this in the same stage. So, here with, uh, I started with the treatment. Maybe I, I, I divide that the illusion concept into two parts. One is uh, uh, static part on the foot, the left, left part, because that is I'm going to keep it as a static, and the mobile part, that is maybe the foot part, because we're going to move all the, the rings and wires to the foot. The main thing static part 
example applying the wire very careful about the period the case is avoid uh, rising because not to normally with the cooler head the way i went down to this and i did a osteotomy you can see the lateral side of the incision i asked the osteotomy i did a incomplete osteotomy because i'm putting the complex stem in the middle to do osteotomy that's so what i do just i do a osteotomy incomplete osteotomy then once i apply the plate finally i'll complete the osteotomy and do the final so with that this is a static construct the next uh, planning of osteotomy that talk what i like there is there are metatarsal cells in there i don't want to do a osteotomy with the metatarsal because many of them are very difficult to complete so i plan to do the osteotomy that's inflate in two point and two with the calcium oblique osteotomy always i plan to do oblique because you get a long surface and the oblique is really good and they also really need also do this is the oblique osteotomy plan with the pivotal calcaneal junction with the very standard Uh, this osteotomy to the power cell for electronic power cell. And after that, after the good uh, thing, there is a knee of me with the middle uh, calcaneal ring, and also the, there is a wire in the foot. But here I found the difficulty is uh, uh, in the wire. That's first thing that is the dark side. It's very difficult to uh, hold the middle uh, layer for the for the planning. And this is the final frame of the patient after. You can see that all the frames, the static part and the red part is parallel to the frames. But here, this is not much parallel to the front there. On the right foot, uh, there is a posterior screen, and also you can see the uh, hinges. This is a medial structure. This almost is very close, and that there is a there is actually anteromedially a one more distractor to correct the spinach. Uh, uh, this distractor will prevent the foot. This is a medial distraction. And uh, that is a lateral distraction because we want to do a frontal uh, distraction. We want to come to the lateral side. You can see the other pictures. As you can see, the lateral side is uh, started doing the distraction on the medial side. But also, I did a, a scar release. I did just a remove. That's it. The scar and uh, just did the dressing. I know, like it will heal by lateral distraction. This is a lateral distraction. What I did medial distraction four times and then compared with uh, lateral distraction one four. So that's a differential distraction. I kept the hinge at the level of the osteotomy. See the foot is really wanting to do the same thing with the medial side. This will allow the foot to go down for the right foot direction for the lateral distraction, and also the finish will be corrected uh, by the uh, medial distraction. So anteromedial distraction. You can see what initially I put the anteromedial distraction the anterior thing. After that, once I got the length, I shifted the anteromedial distraction to the medial side. Here the problem is if I fix the distal ring with the weight like. Uh, Within the uh, opening, problem of distraction. This will this will get stuck. So what I did is like I did some rotation uh, of like like grooves. I put a nylon thread and make sure I arrange the foot. Uh, so this is the distraction, and you can see the uh, spinach compost is correctly well. And also you can see that the medial side of the leg is correct. So this is uh, uh, the still like the medical picture before the removal. You can see the long medial area with the foot. The problem here is that medial uh, plate toe is hanging because of the motion of the plate toe. Let's see, you can see the medial distractor and the medial lengthening and the lateral lengthening of the scars on the plate toe and the whole foot rotation of the character. But here in the experiment, the picture shows the character. And after that, I removed the plate toe. I put a cost, walking cost for the plate toe. But here, which we had a serious motion of the plate toe. And uh, I gave a uh, uh, leave for one after the three months. This is a final correction, but still problem is patient from two years. Like uh, what I patient usually, I told I told it all the distractions in the foot that they can stay at the long time because of the next. So that I do follow the patient for long time, but they send the big test. What happened like this? The final correction. You can see that they say near planting they do painfully. She is comfortable. She is walking happily with the baby pain, but the cost is something because I think they will treat. After that, the medial plate after the day after I took it to the middle side to correct the complete plan. And that's a follow-up problem because the patient is not coming regular. Would have anything any problem with the plan? That's why I got the final follow-up on the symptoms. And the stage two correction will be very good. I don't like that. You can see the patient after one day, and maybe a three-year evaluation. The patient needs to see if she wants the medial plate to be correct. The plate plan is not. 
Sir, uh, thank you very much, sir. Probably uh, I am not very sure, but uh, uh, some part of the presentation actually was not audible. But uh, with the slides, you had a lot of things were self-explanatory, and uh, I opened the case for discussion. So, uh, any of the speakers, if you would like to clarify something from Dr. Gandhi, please go ahead. Dr. Vignesh. Sir, did you had any wound complications? Please unshare your screen, sir. Please, yeah. please unshare your screen. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Vignesh, Vignesh, go ahead, please. Sir, did you had any wound complications, sir, in that severe foot deformities? The wound complications, actually, dorsally, there is the skin uh, forward. Uh, just I put an incision. I say the same. It's okay. During the yes, gradual correction, I didn't have any problem with everything. But initially, first few weeks, there is a incision. After that, it's subsequent. Just I put a bit of boss over the 
and the video phone I'm talking about the Astra TV Vivo. Okay, sir. On the dorsal uh, aspect, sir. Astra TV Vivo. Dorsal, dorsal wound, sir. That foot was Nothing almost enough. touching the tibia. Yeah, actually, first case there is a severe scar contract. The second case there is not much scar. Both cases yes, I did a small uh, incision for the dorsal. It says even scar for the first case. Okay, so, sir. I know, like it's opening like uh, raw area. Even the okay. raw area gradual distraction, like same thing as the arterial incision. Then it's also probably like a pain with the gradual distraction. That's not the pain. You can see the pain. So the draw area left out without any suturing or anything. It was no, left open. Draw area means it's a gradual distraction. I, mean, okay. I told you like initial first few days, yes, it sir. was almost four or uh, two to three centimeters. Uh, that you can tell the length of the wound, like dorsal. Okay, okay, sir. Like I know it will heal because most of the initial of this like gradual distraction will heal. Like a large gap bone, even we never do a left out. So it's a good okay. Dr. Subramanya Gandhi, anything you want to ask, sir? And Dr. Sridhar, before I request uh, Dr. Basu, Dr. Basu, sir, to come in. It was an excellent, excellent uh, case demonstration, sir. The question will be, how did you plan the osteotomies? But actually, we are not able to hear your voice, sir. Oh. So, osteotomy Suresh is Gandhi, case. two cases I showed. Two cases I showed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First case, I did osteotomy through the calculus. Calculate the word, already calculate the word fuse. So I did an opening after him through the lateral side. Okay, sir. Okay, second case, you know the deformity that is a heel, heel valgus, valgus and that is a four foot dorsal function. So I did a L osteotomy, one is going through the midfoot and another osteotomy goes through the just uh, subtalar tendon. Subtalar tendon is not against the steer because it's fused. So I did just see the calculum, just above that I did osteotomy, L osteotomy. So one thing is correcting the heel virus, the other one is the thing. So in the reverse form of L, you had a did osteotomy, sir? Yes. Okay, L means like one, one vertical limb will go through the midfoot. Okay, sir. The horizontal limb will go through the calculative part. Calcul okay, sir. And second time, when I did the second time, the, I changed uh, the dorsal ring. Because that uh, I did a second ring changing after uh, eight to nine days. Because that time all the osteotomy is fused. So I did a one more osteotomy at the ankle level. Because I, I realized that the ankle is more after correction. I can, second ring, so I can see that analysis is fused with the, uh, almost with the emergency and all. So I did the osteotomy at the level of ankle. Sir, uh, Vasu, sir. Uh, May I request you to uh, give your comments, sir? Uh, we, we can't hear you, sir. Sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Sir, your voice not audible, sir. How is it now? Oh, no yes, audible, sir. We can hear you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gandhi, are you happy with the result? Sir, first case. Uh... No, no. Just one simple, straightforward answer. Are you happy with the end result? Yes, sir. But I happy. correct whatever the patient came with, I'm happy. No, no, you are done. You are, you, there was a lot of fumbling over there in the uh, frame connections and all. No, okay. it was actually looking very complicated, but it's a simple case. It is only looking complicated because there is no joints anyway. Yes, sir. Okay, you just have to do an osteotomy. Distract everything. Finally, finally, you put on an SUV, the whole thing will be corrected slowly. Or even without any, because hinge placement is going to be really difficult. 
So you can completely distract the whole, whole uh, do a midfoot osteotomy or uh, because there is no bones anyway. Distract it. Keep say about one inch lengthening. Posterior part again. So you have to di differentiate how much is the hind foot deformity, hind, how much is the forefoot deformity, how much is the distal tibia deformity. These are the only deformities possible. And correct each one. Like you distract it out, say about uh, one, two centimeters or something. You correct everything in one go. Yes, sir. All can be corrected together. So it is so simple as that. It looks very complicated. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So this case is when when you, when you have a joint, it is different. It is it is because the treatment is difficult. So you have to do exact osteotomy, precise osteotomy levels and all. When you don't have joints, it is only only the cosmetic appearance and a plantar grade foot. So the target is simple. Okay. Whereas when you have a subtalar joint, when you have an ankle joint, when you have a uh, midfoot joints. Then you have to be very, very careful. Okay, okay. When nothing is there, it is a child's play. Yes, sir. That, that first case I showed uh, that the child is very happy now walking better than before. Initially, yeah. she was walking with the lateral column of the foot. Now she's walking that I increase the surface area of the contact. That's, the thing no, no, that's what I'm saying. It looks yeah. that way only. It is so simple. Yeah. Turning it around and all. No. Yes, sir. Maybe for you, maybe for you, it looks like simple, sir. I don't know. For you also, it is a simple thing. Only thing, no? We make it complicated. Yes, sir. Actually, I'm, I'm thinking it's simple only. But maybe it's simple only. Yeah, it is simple. Too, well, yeah. Complex, yeah. It, it looks, looks complicated. Like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Like, I, I can't believe it's so complicated. It's a yeah. simple only. But if you know one by one, if you... I say like... Uh, yeah, you have to, you have to do a proper understanding, proper planning, as you said. Difficult problem, make it as a simple problem. Like, that's it. Yeah, it that's it. Yeah. That's, that's what yeah. I did plan. Do a proper planning. Overall, yes. it's a simple case when compared to the CTEVs. Yes, sir. CTEV have good joints, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here, you don't have it. So, some, yes. that, that is why that is the advantage of this case. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anyway, you really had a tough time. Yes, Thank you, and, sir. And uh, there is some residual deformities which should yes, have been sir. corrected. Yes, sir. This actually... Patient, I told you she came from Gujarat. Actually, what happened? She went and uh, she came with the deformed other thing. The doctor said So I couldn't do further. But child is yeah. walking. The parents and they're comfortable now. Like maybe I'll reassess it as I said. If they require for the medial revision, that kind of thing, maybe I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll leave that. Yeah. Okay. Good case. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. So, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Suresh Gandhi, sir, for this wonderful case. And uh, now, may I request the last speaker of the day, Subramanya Gandhi. Dr. Gandhi, please go ahead, share your screen. Good evening, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, loud and clear. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So, I'd like to thank the Assam India for giving me this opportunity, sir. Today's case will be saying about a complex deformity of the knee, which was corrected by using Elizabeth fixator. So, the patient is a 17-year-old boy who came with the forward bending deformity of the knee for the past two years. He was not able to weight bear or walk using the affected limb. So in 2019, the patient was normal. Since after which he had a slip and fall at road and uh, injured his left knee. The patient went for native splinting. Sorry, sir. Yeah, carry on, carry on. The patient went for a native splinting. Total of eight splints was given for a period of three months. And during each splint, the patient underwent manipulation and massaging. So the patient, uh, during this course of treatment, he developed loss of weight, appetite, cough, and evening raise in temperature, where the patient was diagnosed to have a pulmonary tuberculosis. And he was started on ATT. And uh, during that course, the patient developed swelling in the left knee joint where the cyanide fluid analysis of the left knee was done. It showed uh, the patient had developed a tuber uh, extra tuberculosis in the knee joint also. His levels were raised. Adenosine deaminase levels were elevated. Acid fast chain was positive. The total count glucose and protein levels were elevated. 
So patient was treated for anti-tubercular treatment for uh, osteoarticular tuberculosis for nine months. And after that, the patient went to a native, uh, went to a local doctor or ortho, uh, nearby orthopedician where they have treated them uh, with a lower tibial pin tract uh, traction was given for this deformity to be corrected. Once it was started, the patient has added initially two, three and four kgs. They kept on adding the weights. The patient started developing paresthesia of left foot. So he came for further management. Now the patient is a position is around supine pain position, his hip in 45 degree flexion. He has more than 90 degrees of knee flexion deformity. His petrola is not appreciable. And uh, he has, uh, there is obvious wasting of the calf and uh, thigh muscle wasting. His hamstrings were tight. The petrola is fused. There is no mobility. His ex examination, his knee movements is around 100, 100 degree knee flexed deformity is present. There is no further flexion. There is around 10 centimeter of thigh muscle wasting and 5 centimeter of uh, tibial wasting, which shows the chronicity of the problem. So the X-ray, we can see in the left knee that there is a complete obliteration of the knee joint space. The petrola is fused with the distal femur. There is not obvious any joint dislocation or subluxation. The ortho CT scanogram, we were able to see around 95 degree flexion deformity is put into the knee joint. The 3D CT showed the petrola is completely fused with the distal femur. So MRI was taken, which showed large subchondral erosions involving the tibial, femoral, and petalar facets. There is com uh, complete destruction of the medial and lateral meniscus and the AC anterior cruciate ligament. The other collaterals and the posterior cruciate was intact. The post uh, patient had a fibrous ankylos of the left knee with a fixed flexion deformity due to post TB sequelae. So we planned for a stage procedure. Stage one, we did a common per nerve release and a deformity correction of the left knee. And stage two, we plan for arthrodesis with the lizard fixator itself. So pre-operative PM assembly was done. So the assembly was mounted on the patient and checked for uh, the gap to be posterior gap and everything was checked for the comfortability of the patient. First, we proceeded with the common per nerve release. Why this was done? Um, because the patient during the initial uh, treatment itself, while doing the lower tibial pin traction, he developed paresthesia. And so we were skeptical about the nerve uh, getting more uh, involved. So we did first a common parent nerve release before the application of the fixator. So using the rule of the thumb and there was no any deformity and there was no any movements in the knee and we are not expecting any movements to be in the knee joint. The shan spins were applied uh, anteriorly, anterolateral and anteromedial in the distal femur and same in the tibia also anterolateral and anteromedial. So the motors were kept posteriorly and we used a step ring so that we can, so that the shan spin can be applied as close as to the core as possible. So this was the immediate post-op X-ray. So using the rule of similar triangles, we started on the distraction of motor. So from 95 degrees, the deformity gradually corrected to 70 degrees. And from 70 degrees, we got a correction up to 40 degrees. From 40 degrees, there was a correction to 25 degrees. During this correction, there was uh, the patient didn't have any complaint or any pain, but uh, when on checking the X-ray, I felt that some there was some cortical breach was present. So asked for an uh, anterior uh, AP view X-ray, where we were able to find a supracondylar fracture. So this fracture was uh, treated like a normal fracture, and we gave rest for destruction or stop for a period of one month. So the common expected complication during destruction would be nerve injuries like paresthesia or weakness, knee joint subluxations or dislocation, supracondylar fracture. If there is a facial is open, the facial injury. Vascular injury or secondary deformities that develop if the improper placement of hinges. So then we followed after the period of rest, we started doing the distraction again. Now the residual deformity of around five, five degrees was left for the knee to be kept in mild flexion. Now we are decided for the patient uh, to go for a knee arthrodesis. During this stage, the patient was walking completely full weight bearing. But uh, patient during this stage, he felt that uh, he is completely comfortable and he, de he deferred the uh, knee arthrodesis procedure. So we had to go for implant uh, removal was done. 
this is that uh, after the implant removal we gave a tube cast for a period of 3 months during that period patient started working and uh, he is the breadwinner of the family so this is his x ray taken in december the patient started doing his uh, actual independent act activities independently at present he doesn't have any pain or any difficulty while walking we have told in later stage any time the problem if it is present then we might need to do a complete uh, fusion of the knee joint surgical fusion the patient doesn't have any mobility in the knee joint thank you sir thank you dr gandhi uh, just a quick doubt like uh, uh, this this basically some uh, kind of uh, this was kind of a you know uh, managing knee contracture or uh, hyperflexion deformity of the knee using distraction so uh, yes. firstly is it advisable to uh, distract the knee joint by a few millimeters before you start correcting the deformity that is uh, my question number one and secondly why do you think the fracture happened was it was it because of uh, because you didn't do the distraction of the knee before actually starting to correct the deformity or was it due to some stress riser so the effect hinges were distracted around the hinge we distracted around 5 mm distraction was done sir initially itself right. during the after the procedure right. i feel the rate at which the distraction we went uh, the fracture mm -hmm. might have happened sir but the patient didn't develop any paresthesia or numb, uh, any neurological involvement or any pain so we went yeah. at around uh, 3 mm per day distraction 1 mm into 3 uh, 1 uh, 1 mm to 3 times a day yeah yeah so, so once for the, the effective happened, distraction gandhi yeah, yeah. The, the procedure which you have done is perfect and the framework perfect. Beautifully done. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, you know, here you have been aiming for a knee fusion. Okay. Yes, sir. At the end. So there is no point in doing a distraction. Again, the reason for supracondylar fracture was 3 degree flex. Okay. Sorry, sir. The patella was fused to the femoral condyle at 90 yes, degree sir. flexion. Agreed? Yes, sir. Yes, when sir. you distract the tibia, the tibia will go and touch the distal uh, patella. Yes, sir. Now you cannot do any more distraction. Yes, sir. So And that results in supracondylar fracture. Because there is a pin there. At that pin level, it fractures. The reason was the patella. And the patella will be now healed to the tibia. So now what will happen is the tibia heals to the patella, patella heals to the femur. The femur correction has happened, supracondylar osteotomy. Level. So you have done your job well. <laughs> Blessing and no <laughs> Yeah, that is why you know when that, that that's yes, what really happened. It's good. So if you distract the joint, Actually, this will not happen. Sir. Sir. So it was actually a blessing in disguise. And yes, you sir. don't have Eventually to wait for you don't have to wait for one month. So when that fracture happens, you are planning to correct it. You just wait for five days. It's a closed okay. osteoclasis. Yes, sir. Okay. It's a closed osteoclasis. Continue yes. distraction, you will get the job. So what I felt only one thing was instead of distraction taking place in the knee joint, if I do that distraction at that initial after that's five days, I, it will act like an That is what I am saying. With the patella fused in 90 degree flexion, you cannot aim for knee distraction. Okay. Because sir. the patella has to go off. It has to mm -hmm. allow the tibia to go in front. That will never happen there. Happen. Yes, unless we do op open. Unless you take the patella out. Out. So the patella is now gone into the tibia. You can see that. It's healed. Yes, sir. Patella is healed to the tibia. Yes, sir. And the patella is healed to the femur. Femur. Yeah, Rest of the correction has taken place in the femur. Femur. Yeah, so it has, it has actually done a fusion in one go. Mm -hmm. The safest case, no? Yes, sir. 
a beautiful case. Thank you, sir. Sir, one small uh, doubt. Yes, sir. Uh, what about the hindi? Yes, sir. Most of them still forget English, but they are. It looks like uh, they start English coding during the present exam. So most of them end up with some subject which has like all this grammar coding. So most of them use the. Uh, no, that subluxation happens only when the joint is free. Here it is a femur. If you place the hinge perfectly well, and it will not happen. When the knee joint is free, then you will have problems. So fibrous angulosis, and you place the hinge properly, that will work. Here only that the patella was created in trouble, and he went for a supracondylar fracture. When you see the fracture, you will get upset. Actually, you must be happy. You it was a blessing in disguise, no? Yes. Okay. Uh, very nice cases. My phone is going to die. I'm traveling. No, I'm just leaving. Thank you, Manish. Thank you, so much, thank sir. you sir. Manish, thank you. I'm just leaving now because I got the information only just now. He called me only now. Somehow I could join you. Right. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much, much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. All all cases were excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Continue. Manish sir. Manish. Actually, sir was telling his internet is not connection yeah. is not that much effective in Africa, sir. He is still online. Yes, sir. But nice cases, all all cases are very nice, like different, different, like deformity correction and severe foot contracture and post-infective sequelae, everything were very nice. And results also came out very well in all the cases. Thank you. Sir, can we log out, sir? Yeah, just a minute, I will check with... Money is one minute here. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. I just am telling others to be very good. Sir, your voice is very low. Sridhar and me are both UG classmates, BPS. Oh. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Manish is not on online. Sir, thank you so much. Everybody had presented nicely and excellent case presentation. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you to Assam India for giving us this opportunity. Thank you, thank you so much, sir.